Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my series on preparing for FCE and CAE writing. That word writing usually makes students sick in my class or they basically when I say today we're going to prepare an essay it's like oh god everyone hates writing and yes it is boring but unfortunately if you want to pass these exams you've got to do it. Now the thing is people often do quite badly at the writing so when I often see students um, uh, like breakdown of their marks like in the past a lot of them suffered in writing and I have spent years trying to improve my way of teaching and to try and get students writing up there by using certain strategies you know bits of advice and constant practice and I'm going to share that all with you because I think I found a way because a lot of students over the past year have really complimented me uh, on my sort of techniques and they have actually got very good writing results okay now, I've decided to put FCE and CAE together because basically they're very, very similar uh, in what you have to do for the written exam. Uh, the main difference is, of course, for CAE, you need to produce something pretty phenomenal. Um, and FCE, of course, they accept sort of generally lower like, language for that level. It's quite simple, but it's like the, the, the methods are exactly the same. All right? Now, we'll go through my advice, okay? and then I'm going to do another video after this on how to plan. Uh, and that's the special one, and that's going to make a difference. All right, let's have a look at number one. How many and how long? Okay, the FCE is 80 minutes. There are two essays. That means you have 40 minutes per essay. Uh, the CAE, you've got 90 minutes. Again, you have two essays. That is 45 minutes per essay. Um, yeah, sounds impressive. My mathematics is really good. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Now, this is really important. You have to plan your essays, I'm going to come to that a bit later. You have to dedicate 25 minutes to planning your essay, okay, say for FCE, and then you have 15 minutes to copy it over to the exam paper. Now, if you don't do that, you're going to produce a shitty essay. It's as simple as that. Or if you're uh, naturally talented at writing, congratulations, but most students are not, okay? Now, um, let's go on to number two, very, very simple. You have to know your essay. Now, there are different types. Uh, for example, you've got your part one, kind of sort of more argumentative academic essay, so to speak. And part two, so the second essay, you've got your review, your article, email, another sort of topical essay or, and report. There are less essays to do now uh, after the new 2015 format compared to the previous CAE and FCE format. Okay, now, Let's start off with this, the do's and the don'ts. Even before I tell you about the compulsory uh, and part one essay and part two essays, they mean nothing if you don't know the do's and the don'ts. The do's and the don'ts are what you are required to know per essay. So for example, if you're going to write an article, it often says in the textbooks, we like to have a rhetorical uh, question in the introduction. Or if you're going to write a report, we like to have bullet points, or in the introduction, you should say how you collected the information, what you're writing about, um, and etc. etc. Now, the question is, where can you find these do's and don'ts? Now, I will show you. I have a fantastic book uh, by Pearson. It's called Pre First uh, Gold. Uh, it's quite a new book. Um, it's not FCE, but it's basically preparing for FCE. But at the back, because I don't have an FCE or CAE book here. At the back, I'll hold this to the camera, you will see, I might come here, you will see like this essay, and you will see these points uh, around the essay, and they're like uh, advice on what you need to do for that particular essay, and this one is the article. So for example, here it says, do think of an interesting title, so it says we need a title for the article. Uh, do start with an interesting phrase, mm, that's obvious. Um, it says, do use uh, a direct question to involve the reader. So, you know, something rhetorical to attract interest. It makes your essay more colourful. And as you can see on the report here, it's the same thing. We have all these do's and the don'ts around the essay. If you buy uh, a textbook like uh, Pearson's Gold Series, FCE or Advanced, or even Complete or Objective, or, um, you will find the same advice at the back of every textbook and you need to study those do's and the don'ts. Some textbooks will give you some different advice on what's required per essay, but you get the general idea of, of what is required 
for a particular essay. Okay, and you need to know those like that. So the moment you go into the exam and you choose, say, part two, I'm going to write a review, you know exactly what you need to do. You don't need to think about it, okay? Because, let's be honest, my friends, let's not argue with Cambridge. It's their exam. Let's make them happy. Let's do what they ask us to do, okay? Uh, because many students do not. Now, part one is your compulsory essay, which means you have to do it. You don't have a choice. And now this, the format is quite standard for FCE and CAE. This one is FCE. It kind of looks like this. Okay, so you have a task. Students, uh, so should students have a long summer holiday or should terms be longer? Uh, which is better for learning, leisure activities and the holidays? Your own idea. Okay, um, you can find such um, practice in all these kind of like trainers. It's very, very simple. And so basically that would be your part one. In the CAE, it's basically the same thing. Okay, it's basically the same. And I will show some differences later. Okay, part two is going to look something like this. So, um, sorry, the light is reflecting. So you've got like, you know, three essays and you choose one of them, only one. Uh, some students, maybe two months before the exam, say, Paul, do I have to write all three essays? I hit them really hard around the face because you should know after the first week of starting an FCE or CAE course that part one is compulsory, part two you choose only one. All right? Now, as I said, know your essay. Again, it's like the do's and the don'ts. You know, do I need a title? Do I need paragraph headings? The register is very important. Register means style. So if the question says you're writing to a you're writing for a teenage magazine, your style is going to be relatively semi-formal or informal. So colourful adjectives, phrasal verbs, maybe some informal idioms. If, for example, you 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 choose to write uh, an essay and it says you're writing uh, to the director of a school, why blah 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 blah, then your English should be more formal. Okay, that's a fundamental point. And to get your marks, and you're marked on this, you have to get the register right, okay? Now, just a little piece of advice, you know, a little kind of uh, secret of the trade. Of course, you have to have the right register if you're writing to like someone, like a scientist or a director, but if you choose, say, a particular register, make sure you are consistent, make sure it's the same style. It would be very strange if you were to write, say, let's say a letter of complaint, and you say, Dear Sir or Madame, I was utterly distressed at having purchased your product recently uh, upon understanding that it was faulty. I was upset and it was bad. Like, really different style in that sentence. You would suffer for that. Okay? Now, a lot of you are going to be preparing for this exam without a teacher. Now, I admire you for that because it's not easy. You, you really need to have a teacher who has some experience uh, in teaching FCE, CAE, for CP, whatever, um, because we sort of know how to mark, all right? Now, I'm going to tell you what I do. Cambridge, okay, in their infinite wisdom, really make it unclear what the difference is between a band five, a band four, and a band three. So band five uh, is basically the top mark that you can get for like your writing, it's like amazing. Then band four is maybe with a few more mistakes, and band three is basically more mistakes. Um, and in the teacher's handbook, it doesn't really clearly define uh, what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm going to give you this piece of advice now if you're preparing on your own. Now, this is the sort of teacher's handbook, okay? You can download this uh, from Cambridge website for the course that you're doing, all right? Now, in this book, okay, if I sort of turn over, it has uh, an example, uh, sort of, sort of like a, a practice test, like here, like I showed you in the trainer. And here, what it has, it actually has, if I can show you this out of the light, it has some uh, example essays. And these example essays have been given different marks. So you can read through the handbook and go, well, okay, this essay has been given a band four, this one has been given a band three, this has been given a band five. So it, it, it kind of tells you what level you're aiming for, okay, what kind of language you need. Because I can promise you one thing, boys and girls, if you write an essay and you give it to 10 different teachers, you will get 10 different marks, I promise you. 
So what I like to do when I'm marking essays, I always mark it down. Now that sounds really strict, but uh, I like to know that when my students go to the exam, that you know they're um, they're writing more than they should, if you understand, like better than they should, and then they're surprised. Oh, I got an A in the exam. It's like yes, I wonder why, um, because I'm horrible. All right, so. That is a kind of way to understand the benchmark, the kind of essay uh, level that you need to achieve. Um, of course, if you want someone to mark it, if you have that uh, ability, fantastic. If you don't and you're gonna approach a native online, no native is gonna mark an essay for free, I'm afraid. Uh, I have lots and lots of uh, friends, followers. I cannot mark 3,000 essays a week, I'm afraid. Okay, I would like to, but unfortunately, uh, I'd probably die after two days. Now, you are marked on these things. You're marked on language, content, communicative achievement, and organization. Before 2015, there was just one global mark for your essay. Now, they're split into four pieces. So if a teacher marks your essay, generally you should be given sort of four different marks, okay? It doesn't matter if you're still given one, to be honest. The content is this. Now, again, you, uh, you can read through the teacher's handbook, uh, and it will give you advice on what you need to do. It's mainly for teachers, but students can read this. The content is like, have you answered the question? So we've got like, you know, these tasks that I showed you uh, from the trainer. Have you answered those questions? Now in the part one, if you remember, there were these three points, okay? And you kind of write the first one, the second one. If you forget to cover the third point, you're gonna suffer, you're gonna lose some serious marks. As a teacher, are you ready for this? I will fail a student for forgetting one point because it's a lack of discipline. And basically, the next time students write their essays, they will be a lot more cautious. They'll be more um, sort of focused on not missing that uh, task point, okay? And the content also refers to expanding your ideas. So I'll put this book down. So when you expand your ideas, um, of course, you've got like three points in the part one or part two. It says uh, maybe a, a competition, you know, you write about uh, someone important in your family, say who they are, why they're important and what they mean to you. I mean, those are three small points. You need to expand that. And if the examiner feels you haven't expanded enough, that it's not, or that it just doesn't say much, you're gonna lose marks. You need to expand it uh, to the point that it really gives some sort of nice kind of uh, information. Now, also uh, for the sort of content, uh, when I mark an essay, I like to put myself into the position of the target reader. So imagine if you are writing a, let's say an email to me saying that, you know, you're suggesting to go to a movie because this is what it's like. If I read your essay and I feel compelled to go and see that movie, your English is damn good because you've had that effect on me. If I read your essay and say like, what are you saying here? And you know, it doesn't sound very convincing and you haven't really promoted the film, then you're gonna lose marks. Like, okay, you don't lose marks, you're just not gonna get a high one, okay? And so, you know, that is the uh, sort of, uh, that, that is how like to know if your English is that good or not. That's why you need to practice, all right? If your English is that good, you will have that effect on me. And believe me, some students do, all right? Uh, you, you're basically, your communicative achievement, it's basically like pretty much uh, the same thing. Like in the sort of teacher's book here, if I go to that page, it says uh, the community of achievement is again, you know, uh, your register. Is it the correct style? Um, you know, for example, uh, is it laid out accordingly to the task given? Does it hold the attention? Um, if uh, you write about a complaint, does it feel like it's a complaint? That's that, okay? You have your organization. Your organization is, are your paragraphs clearly organized? Does one paragraph flow into the other? Or do the ideas seem really disconnected, right? Now, for organization, you need discourse markers. Now, discourse markers are those words like, however, furthermore, in addition, nevertheless, on top of that, etc., etc. Uh, to know, um, you, you need to really learn these discourse markers and the actual register of the different discourse markers because some are formal, some are informal. And if you go to Michael Swan's Oxford English Grammar Course Advanced, The Green Bible, page 262, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's evidence that I have no friends or life or social life. 
Um, yeah, page 262, there is a big unit on discourse markers that you can practice. I strongly recommend it. Michael Swan, Oxford English Grammar Course Advanced. Right? Um, so yes, uh, about organising your paragraphs with your discourse markers. Language, of course, you can't write an essay without it. Um, you're marked on, of course, your vocab, your grammar. Um, you're sort of, there's sort of two main areas that you've got your accuracy and your range. Now, accuracy is how well you use particular collocations, maybe grammatical uh, structures, maybe for trying to do something very complicated um, and you fail, well, do you know what? You've tried something complicated, it's FCE, so we'll ignore it. Okay, or maybe we, they wouldn't ignore it, CAE, for example. Um, and, you know, if you're trying to use some nice idiomatic expressions, but maybe you get like one of the words wrong or you miss an article, uh, then, of course, the accuracy, that will sort of go down a little bit. But for range, that might be pretty good because you're showing the examiner you're trying to use uh, a wide range of vocabulary. So if you're going to have uh, this problem, like many students do, and repeating the same word again and again, oh, it was a big problem, then this problem occurred, then we had this problem, then this problem, epic fail face palm. Okay, I hate repetition. Unless there's a very specific uh, word like if you're talking about the greenhouse effect, you can't really find the synonym for that. Okay, you're gonna to have to use a greenhouse effect, greenhouse effect, but you can use your grammar of like substitution and ellipsis to avoid constant repetition. Okay, now the key is how to prepare for an FCE or CAE essay. Number one, I suggest this, especially if you're uh, preparing alone, okay? After following all of this, your do's and the don'ts, know your essays, etc., how it's marked, I suggest this, when you write an essay, Okay, I suggest leaving the essay for two weeks and then come back to it, take your essay and improve it. Because when you improve it, you'll think about what you've done, you'll maybe think of some synonyms that you didn't know before and you challenge your mind, you challenge your vocabulary database and your grammar database and you'll maybe like check structures from your textbooks. I'll, I'll use an inversion here because it actually sounds a lot more colourful with it. Okay. If possible, get it checked by a teacher because honestly, if you're going to prepare for an exam, you should get it checked because I'm going to tell you this. I have known a lot of students who have prepared themselves for this exam and they don't do particularly well in the writing because they can't get it checked. Okay, They try to follow maybe some bits and pieces online through the Cambridge ESOL website or whatever, but if they don't, don't have a teacher to check it, you're not really going to know where you are on that band, like band 5, 4, 3, or below a 3 is a fail. Okay. Basically, I suggest if you really want to practice writing two essays per week, or if you haven't got time, at least one if you're preparing yourself. Uh, with my students uh, in a nine-month course, for the first sort of six months, we do maybe, uh, maybe every four lessons an essay. However, um, about three months before the exam, it's at least an essay or two essays every week to really practice and practice and get that ability to get the planning spot on, to get that vocab out, to get that grammar out, to make sure that we uh, know our essays, that we fulfill all of these points. And therefore, you get your certificate, you get a band five, and you come and you come and kiss my feet, okay? Um, or maybe not. Right? So basically, that is the sort of starting point okay, for your FCE or CAE writing. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a fantastic video on how to plan. Now this is, the, this is going to be the golden video. Okay? Hope that was useful for you. If you have any questions or something, maybe there's something that I didn't answer that you would like to know, please leave a comment below. Please subscribe and share the video with everyone you know, including strangers and tramps. Okay? Have a good day, everyone, and I'll see you uh, hopefully in a minute. Okay? Bye-bye.